um, I would like to tell my story right now. Um, my name is Titi, and um, I'm not doing very well. Um, I come from a home very nice upbringing, middle class. Um, I always had dreams of being an actress. I was very beautiful. I used to dance, do spiritual dances, go to church. And I have a daughter, she's 28. Um, I started drinking at the age of 14. Um, my parents were in the military, there was a lot of alcohol. Parties around, and then um, from that point, I guess, I got addicted to alcohol. Um, I'm still functional. Uh, I have my own apartments, cars, went to college, got a degree, became a social worker, worked at Yale Psychiatric Department, Connecticut Mental Health, where I re revised booklets. I had clients who were diagnosed with schizophrenic depression, bipolar, um, PTS. I used to work with them on a daily basis. I used to run groups for everybody. My life was going well. Um, I was very obese and had diabetes, high cholesterol, everything, so I signed up for gastric bypass. I had a gastric bypass, and from there I lost, like, over 180 pounds, and with that, a lot of people know that when you, when one addiction leaves, you get another addiction, so I just kept drinking very heavily. Um, then, um, in 2005, my heart stopped, um... I died, um, I was in a coma, um, they tried to resuscitate me, they weren't sure that I was coming back, they said I was going to make it, and they said I was going to be a vegetable. I got through it, God brought me through it, I came back, I had to learn to walk, talk, and breathe again. I then got sober and maintained four years of sobriety. I then had eight other surgeries, and I got so tired of having so many surgeries that I relapsed. And when I relapsed... Um, I couldn't get it together. It got worse. Um, then, jump forward, I ended up um, getting sober again, getting three years. And at three years, and that was probably about in 2018, uh, 19. Then I relapsed again. And then when I relapsed, I picked up doing um heroin, which was the worst thing ever for me, and then I indulged in crack, and my life became unmanageable. Um, I had so many ODs, um, and it's just like, I began to hate myself. My, I started aging very quickly. My beauty left me. Um, I disconnected from my family because I was so ashamed. And now I'm back out here. I'm struggling. And I feel very suicidal. And the only thing that stops me is my daughter. I don't want her to have to suffer burying me. But I am in a great deal of pain right now. And I just can't get it together. And part of me wants it so bad, and part of me don't. And I think it's because I'm free. <laughs> Who I may be coming. So, like, it's not gonna last. I got sobriety twice and I fell. So, I don't know if I'll try again, if I'm gonna make it or not. <laughs> I haven't talked to my family in two years. Um, when I got arrested, they had a missing person report out on me. I heard over the radio, and the cop took it out. But I don't remember my mother's number, but I just got my daughter's number today from the hospital. But I still didn't pick up the phone to call because I'm afraid to. And I know they're dying worrying about me. And I need to realize that they're hurting too. I don't know. I'm such a failure. You're not a failure, hon. You're not a failure. No one fails until they give up. And now I'm just thinking, 
Oh, you're not taking care of myself, putting myself in dangerous situations, dangerous places. I've been out at the fentanyl is out. It definitely is the worst thing that has ever hit the United States. I had went to the hospital and I wanted to get help and go to detox but they wouldn't really help me for whatever reason. They, I don't know. I, I was detoxing so bad I couldn't stay awake. I, I, I just was awful and they thought I just wanted to be there to be asleep. They don't know how it feels to detox from heroin. Nobody knows unless you actually really do it. It's the worst feeling ever. And then so they let me go today and then I, somebody gave me a bag of heroin when I was walking down the street. And I think I nodded out and when I woke up the paramedics was there. Today, and then they took me back in the hospital again. We did the same thing over, and I told them over and over again I wanted to kill myself. I even wrapped something around my neck. And they told me I was just joking, that I still had to leave. And so they put me out in the hospital again. They put me in handcuffs and called the cops on me because I begged them not to let me out. Because I was so scared of what I was going to do. So they, threw me out the hospital again today. And so now I'm here and I'm like debating. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just lost, afraid, ashamed, guilty. And, and I'm not alone. So no, you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> I continue to get robbed. <laughs> I have nothing but hospital stuff on. And they said that I had a bed at Stonington. But they told me I got to make the car. I thought the hospital would help you get into it. And I thought if you asked me to help you get it, if they're depending on me to go get it while I'm detoxing, that's impossible. At least for me it is. I feel like I tried to advocate for myself. And I don't think they fully understand addiction yet. Because even if you OD or anything on the street, they just pick you up, throw you in the ambulance, talk shit to you, and send you to the hospital, put you in the hallway, let you rest it off, and then kick you out again. And that's not how it should be. There is a crisis out here with addiction. People die OD all the time. They should be better equipped with stuff and more sensitive to it. We're not bad people. We just made bad choices. It just happens so quick all the time. I don't understand addiction either. I remember how I vowed to never do drugs and stuff and look at me. Here I am. But I know there's something greater than me watching over me. I just hope I keep the faith. Somebody else's life, you know. But they're not alone. And I hope um, the medical field, the hospitals, and other people really, really take a deep look at this. Nobody wants to wake up and go through this once you're addicted. Nobody.
I don't understand why I want to take myself through this horrible, horrible stuff. so powerful, so revealing, and I feel ashamed for our system, because we haven't done enough, we have not done enough, there is a, a situation out there, there is something that we need to do right now. There's a fire burning. And the embers are leaping out into the air. And you only need one spark to start a prairie fire. So we need that spark to heal the people around us. To heal our community. We need love. We need to fix what we fucked up. Letting these drugs through the borders, letting people ship all these narcotics through the borders, attacking our people, spending all this money instead of spending it on on mental health treatment and reaching out to the people. This is our money. This is our tax dollars. This money should be going to us and our society. It shouldn't be going to foreign wars. This is the consequence. This is what you see when you frivolously waste money and act like an idiot. Your hands off the wheel and the ship is going astray. We need to bring the ship back to harbor. We need to bring love back home. This is a light in the dark. Do you see the light?